Hello, in this video, we'll talk about inventory management okay, as a way of uh, speeding up uh, inventory, inventory days so that we can manage the cash conversion cycle better. Okay. So when we talk about inventory management, there are different view, viewpoints about the appropriate inventory levels in companies. And usually different departments have different views and opinions in terms of the level of inventory. So financial managers disposition, of course, we don't want to spend so much money on inventory. Kasi when you, when you buy a lot of inventory or produce a lot of inventory, it requires money. And if, there, if it's not being sold, no, then you're not getting your worth in terms of the, the, the cash that you invested. So from a financial manager's viewpoint, inventory levels should always be kept low because it is tied up money and tawag doon. Right? When you, when you produced a lot of inventory, hindi naman nabibenta. So nakatenga yung pera mo sa inventario. Right? And uh, inventory that's not being sold is cash that is held hostage in inventory. Okay? So you need to sell it so that you can get what you invested. And so therefore, that's the viewpoint of a financial manager. For marketing managers, the usual viewpoint is that there should be large inventories. Okay. Why? Because they don't want stock outs. Ang, ang, ang objective ng marketing manager magbenta, right? Or ng sales manager is to, is to make sure na may benta. At kung walang inventories, right? therefore, there are, there's opportunity costs with respect to stock outs, right? Nabenta mo na sana, pero hindi mo nabenta kasi walang stock. No? So therefore, lost profit din yun from the point of view of the marketing manager. Now, the manufacturing manager's major responsibility naman is to implement the production plan so that it results in the desired amount of finished goods on time and at a low cost. That's the point of view of the manufacturing manager. Okay? Basta... Sabihin niyo sa akin kung ilan, ayoko ng last minute instructions kung ilan ba kailangan inventory. Okay? Kasi kung maraming last minute, it keeps costs high no? because you have to buy extra inventories or extra finished extra raw materials, etc. That could increase the cost of those inventories. Okay? So the purchasing manager is concerned solely with the raw materials inventories. Wala siyang pakialam dun sa ibang klaseng inventory. Basta yung kailangan niyang bilhin. Kailangan predictable and consistent. Right? So with these different viewpoints, it's difficult to have a unified stand corporate-wide on the proper inventory levels. So that's why inventory is usually a big discussion among different uh, groups in an organization. So what are the objectives for managing inventory? So the objective of managing inventory is to determine and maintain the level of inventory that is sufficient to meet demand, but not more than necessary. Okay. So of course, we need inventory. Hindi pwedeng zero ang inventory. Okay. So therefore, what we need to determine in terms of managing inventory is what is the optimal level? No? What level of inventory is sufficient to meet the demand that we are anticipating, okay? So what are the motives for holding inventory? The first, of course, is transactions. No? You, had, you want to hold enough inventory you know, for the ordinary production to sales cycle, okay? The, another motive for holding inventory is as a precaution, a precautionary motive. You no, know? We want to avoid stock out losses. What is stock outs? There is demand. But no inventory. So sayang, di ba? May bibili sana, pero walang inventario. So that's the precautionary motive. Another is speculative motive no? to ensure availability and pricing of inventory. No? Just in case may bibili. No? Speculative motive. Okay. So what are the uh, different approaches no, to... Uh, managing levels of inventory. The first approach is what we call what we call economic order quantity. Another is the just-in-time model, and the rest are materials, resource planning, uh, uh, softwares, or systems. We'll discuss each of one 
Nathan. What are the different types and costs of inventory? So there are three types of inventory. When we say inventory management, we usually talk about these three types. First is the raw materials inventory. So the raw materials inventory is items purchased and used as primary inputs in the production of finished goods. Work in process are the costs of uncompleted items that are in process of being manufactured and finished goods, yun yung tapos na. Items that are 100% complete and constitute sellable stocks. For example, you're making, say, pampers. Okay. What is the raw material of pampers? Paper. Paper is, is fed into a production line. Pag na-feed na yan into the production line, that inventory is called the work-in-process inventory. Once lumabas na siya ng production line and, and ready for selling, that's called finished goods already. Okay? So yung paper, yan yung raw materials niya. Okay? So inventory management deals with all of these kinds of inventories. Okay? And when you have inventories, there are three types of costs to consider. Number one is holding costs. What are holding costs? Costs incurred in physically keeping stocks of inventory. And usually, the higher the inventory levels, the higher is the holding cost, which actually makes sense, right? Higher hold, dahil mas marami kang inventory levels, the cost of physically keeping those stocks will also be higher. You probably need to build another warehouse or uh, temperature control, more square footage, right? And so therefore, it will be more costly to physically keep those stocks if you have high inventory levels. Ordering costs naman are costs incurred in ordering and receiving items purchased. So if you have high inventory levels, your ordering costs will be low. Right? Kung mataas ang inventory levels mo, mas madalang kang mag-order for new stocks. Right? And because of that, your ordering costs will be lower. So you can already see here that holding costs and ordering costs are two costs related to inventory that are, again, push and pull. No? They have a different impact if inventory is high. So kung mataas ang inventory, holding costs are high. Kung mataas ang inventory, ordering costs naman are low. And the opposite, if you have low inventory levels, you have low holding costs. If you have low inventory levels, you have high ordering costs. Kasi kung liit lang ang inventory mo, mas madalas ka mag-order. Okay? Another kind of cost is stock out costs. Stock out costs are the opportunity costs related to the foregone income from sales lost as a result of inventory stock out or downtime costs if the item is used as an input to the production process. Kung wala kang inventory, pwede ka magka-stock out costs. May bibili sana. Pero hindi na niya nabili because, it's stuck, because there's no stock. So what is the opportunity cost there? It's the foregone income, the foregone revenue. That's a cost to you, right? That's also a cost of holding less inventory, okay? Now, the first model that we're going to talk about is the economic order quantity model, okay? So inventory management techniques for determining an for determining an item's optimal order size, which is the size that minimizes the total of its order costs and its carrying costs or holding costs. Okay? So yung economic order quantity method or economic order quantity model is a quantitative model where what we want to do is to determine the optimal amount of order size you know, so that at that order size, if you implement it um, consistently over the year, that order size will minimize the total inventory costs. Now, total costs related to uh, inventory levels. And what are those two costs? Ordering costs and holding costs. Or in this case, we call them carrying costs. Okay? So the order cost is the fixed clerical costs of placing and receiving an inventory order. And carrying costs are variable costs for holding an item in inventory. 
for a specific period of time. Okay? So the EOQ model minimizes the total costs, the total of the two costs. Okay? So order costs, as I mentioned, decrease as the size of the order increase and the number of order falls. Carrying costs naman increase with increases in order size. Kasi mas maraming inventory yung kailangan i-hold. So the EOQ model analyzes this trade-off. Okay? So what's the EOQ model? So let's first uh, describe the costs related to inventory. Okay, first is order cost. How much is order cost? Okay, order cost is equal to O, which is the ordering cost per order, times the number of orders. But how do we determine the number of orders? Okay, it's sales per use, sales or usage per year, divided by quantity per order. Okay. If you can imagine, the number of orders is of course dependent on the sales per year divided by the quantity of the order. Then that's the number of orders per year, right? And now that you know the number of orders per year, multiply that by the ordering cost per order, then you have total order costs. Okay. So that's the first component. The second component is carrying cost. Okay. So carrying cost is the carrying cost per unit per year times the average balance of inventory. Okay. Which is the quantity per order divided by two. Okay, so with this, the total cost is ordering cost plus carrying cost. That's the total cost. Now, if you use uh, calculus, you know, you can try to minimize this cost function, you know, and determine at what level Q. At what level Q will this cost be minimized? No? You can do the economics or you can do the math of it. But it results to this formula, so which is the EOQ formula. So here, the EOQ or the economic order quantity is the amount of Q order quantity which minimizes the total cost function, which minimizes this one. And what is that? Okay. So the EOQ is equal to the square root of 2 times S, which is sales per year. Sometimes this is called demand. Demand per year, meaning the usage or the sale, the parang demand of the product. Kasi yun yung parang bawa sa inventory, di ba? Parang kung malaki ang demand, then malaking marami order in. O is the order cost per order, and C is the carrying cost per unit of the product per year. Okay, ang important, same unit to, ah, sales per year, no, carrying cost per year. Just make sure that we are in the proper units. Okay, so graphically, what does this look like? Graphically, no, the optimal order size or the EOQ is the point at which the total inventory cost is at its minimum. And it is usually... And it, not usually, but it will be at the point you know, where total order cost is equal to carrying cost. Okay. It will be at this level where they intersect. So as the inventory order size increase, the order costs fall. Why? Because there will be less orders kasi malaki na yung inventory levels, right? No? But if the order quantity increase, which means the inventories also increase, carrying costs will now increase. Okay? Total costs are minimized when the saving in order cost is equal to the increase in carrying cost. So that's the yung ibig sabihin ng marginal. Okay? Marginal carrying cost is equal to marginal ordering cost. So that's the minimum optimal order size or the economic order quantity. And supposed to be at that level, costs are minimized. 
¿Sí? Let's have an example of the EOQ. So a company has an, has an A group inventory item that is vital to the production process. This item costs one five. And Max uses 1,100 units of this item in a year. Okay. Max wants to determine its optimal order strategy for the item. So to calculate the EOQ, we need the following inputs, which is the order cost per order and the carrying cost per unit per year. We already have the demand for the sales, right? The demand is 1,100 units per year. So from there, you can get the EOQ. So just plug it into the formula. The EOQ is square root of two times one, one, which is the sales or the demand for the input times 150, which is order cost, right? Divided by 200, which is carrying cost per unit per year. So from there, okay, you will need 41 units. So the, the economic order quantity is 41 units, which means you have to order 41 units, and therefore your inventory levels will be 41 units. If you order, if you order more than 41, to have more inventories, it will be more costly, right? If you, you order less than 41, which is not the economic order, you no, know, the costs will be higher then, right? So therefore, what will happen is you will order 41 units. Consume that 41 units over time, right? Again, you will order 41 units, okay? Consume that 41 units over time and then order 41 units again. And then consume that 41 units over time Consume the 41 units over time and then order 41 units again. And then consume 41 units over time, order 41 units. That's the idea behind the economic order quantity. And therefore, your inventory level will be 41 or lower at any point in time. Correct? And on the average, On the average, on the average, your average inventory level will be 41 over 2, which is 20.5 units or 21 units, which is this point. That is your average inventory levels. So that's the idea behind the economic order quantity. Okay, so I hope that clarifies. The concept related to EOQ is the concept of reorder point and safety stops. Let's discuss reorder point first. Okay, so reorder point or the order point is the point at which to order at the point at which to reorder inventory. Kailan ka magre reorder ulit kasi mauubos na ang inventory mo. Okay? So the reorder point is equal to the days of lead time times daily usage. Ano yung days of lead time? It refers to the time it takes from placing the order up to the receipt of delivery from suppliers. Kailan ka order? Edi from the time, how many days ang lead time? Edi from the time na umorder ka hanggang matanggap mo yung inventory. Right? So, that's the lead time. So if the lead time is 10 days, so if I order today, you expect that you'll be receiving the inventory in 10 days. And so you have to consider that in the reorder point, right? At what point ka order? Multiply that by the daily usage. The daily usage is the annual sale, sales or annual usage divided by the number of operating days, okay? So for example, if the lead time is 10 days, and the daily usage is five per day, okay? Again, if the daily 
daily usage is five per day. Okay. And the lead time is say two days. It means the reorder point is 10 units, which is two times five. Okay. Why a 10 units? So pag 10 na lang ang inventory mo, umorder ka na. Para pagdating ng inventory sa'yo in two days, meron ka ng bagong fresh stock. At but, but by that time, sakto na. Sakto na. Pag naubos yung inventory mo, may bago ka ng inventory. Okay? That's what the reorder point means. Okay? Now, what is the safety stock? The safety stock naman is extra inventory that is held to prevent stockouts. Okay? Why do you need extra inventory? We'll discuss later. So here, for example, let's use this graph. The reorder point can be at this point. Kinari one day. Kinari one day ang lead time. Okay. It means today, ganito ang inventory levels mo. Today, your inventory levels are like this. But tomorrow, your inventory level is zero. Right? And so therefore, you probably need to order today. So that bukas, meron kang fresh stock of 41. Okay? Example. So... Assume that Max operates 250 days a year and uses 1-1 one, one units of this item. And so daily usage is 1-1 one, one divided by 250. You know? So therefore, the daily usage is 4.4 units a day. If the lead time is two days, then the reorder point is two times 4.4 or 8.8 units. Okay? So therefore, kailangan na nang mag-order di Max ng additional, nang mag-reorder si Max equal to the EOQ when ang inventory on hand niya is 9 units na lang. Okay? So that's the reorder point. Next, safety stock. Safety stocks are essential when there is unpredictable demand and unpredictable lead time. In all of our discussions, we did discuss the idea of uncertainty. Right? In reality, the demand is uncertain. Right? In reality, the lead time is uncertain. So you need a little bit of buffer. Right? So that with that buffer, you're able to, to check, you know, you're able to have some confidence about um, the operations of the company. Because without safety stock, then you're assuming that the demand that you inputted, that is one, one per year, the lead time, that is two days, is all going as planned. It's, go, it's all going to um, materialize as planned, which is not always the case. So if there's a lot of unpredictability in terms of demand and lead time, then you need more safety stocks. Okay? Even though it's more expensive to have additional stocks because we already computed our EOQ, right? But still, the fact that, that, that demand is uncertain, lead time is uncertain, you know, then we have to take that into consideration. Okay? So in determining the optimal safety stock, what we want to do is to compare the cost of the stock out versus the cost of maintaining these additional inventories as safety stocks. We'll have an example to further illustrate it. So let's have this example. So assume that the company can sell 1,000 units annually. No? The ordering cost is 2,500 per order and the carrying cost is 80 per unit per year. Okay? Let's determine the EOQ. No, the EOQ here is two times the square root of two times S times O over C. So therefore, it's square root of two times 1,000, which is our demand, 1,000 units, times 2,5, which is the order cost per order, divided by 80, which is the carrying cost per unit per year. So determine the EOQ. The EOQ in this case is 250 units. Now, assuming that it takes five days from order time to delivery, and there are 250 working days in a year, what is the reorder point? So the order point is lead time times daily demand. So equal five days times 1,000 units over 250. So 
So the reorder point is 20 units. So kung 20 na lang units mo, start ka na mag-order para dumating on time. Okay? However, um, hindi naman certain palagi no, yung demand. No? So let's assume, in this case, assume that the demand for the units have the following probability distribution during the period. Ito yung probability distribution. So units here pertain to demand. Okay? So there are, there's a 10% probability that the demand will only be 5. Okay? Right? Sorry, I think I have a mistake in the previous slide. The EOQ is only 25. Okay? That's the EOQ, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, it's not 250. Okay. Okay, sorry. Tama pala yung 250. So I, I checked it. That's why I stopped the recording. 250 is correct. So I retract that. <laughs> so 250 is the EOQ. Now let's go to this example. Okay. Now here... So assume that the demand for the units have the following probability distribution during the order period. So the order period is from the reorder is placed to the delivery is received. Okay? So during that period, so how many days by yun? This is a previous slide. Five days. 20 yung safety stock natin, di ba? Uh, sorry, 20 yung lead time, uh, yung reorder point natin. And that reorder point is for five days. Okay? So during that five-day period, my demand during that five-day period. Okay? And the demand during that five-day period, the probability distribution is like this. Okay? So there's a 10% demand, but during that five days, five, five units ang yung magbibenta. Okay? There's also a 5% probability that during that five-day period from reorder to receipt of delivery, this 35. So therefore, merong probability na magkaka-stock out ka. Right? Because your reorder point is 20. Right? So, dito, sa mga, sa mga instances na to or scenarios na to, there is stock out. Right? Kasi hindi pa dumadating yung inventaryo mo eh. Hindi pa dumadating yung in-order mong inventory. Eh, during that five-year period, greater than 20 yung naging demand mo. So there's a probability of stock outs for these scenarios. Okay? And therefore, since there's a probability of stock out in these scenarios, then we have to check you know, how much is the cost of the stock out. Okay? So suppose that the stock out cost is 1,000 per unit, no, and we have to determine the appropriate safety stock. The first step is for us to actually determine the total stock out costs. Okay, so the total stock out costs, ESC, is equal to the summation of the probability of I plus, let's analyze this, demand minus reorder point, okay, minus the safety stock if there's any, okay, times the stock out costs times the number of orders per year. Okay? All right. So, and we will only do this summation for every scenario where this is zero, is less than zero, which means kulang yung mas malaki ang, uh, uh, sorry, should be greater than zero. Okay? So mas malaki ang mas malaki ang demand for that scenario minus the the order point or the inventory that we have on hand. Okay? Let's have an example. No? So the first one. So the first in the summation is this one. So that's this scenario. This scenario there's a 10% probability that your demand is 25. Right? However, you only have 20 in your inventory levels kasi yung reorder point mo 20. Okay? Minus zero, my safety stock is zero at this point. Times the 
uh, stock out cost, which is 1,000 per unit, times the number of orders per year, which is uh, 1,100. Uh, well, 1,100 yun, di ba? Ah, sorry, 1,000 units divided by the EOQ, which is 250. So that's four orders per year. Okay. So that's for this scenario, for scenario one. For scenario two, where stock out call, where, where the demand is 30, that probability is 5%. Okay. Times demand is 30 minus uh, inventory level is 20. No, no safety stock. Okay. So therefore, meron kang stock out na 10. Since may stock out ka na 10, may stock out cost ka na 1,000 per unit times four orders per year. Okay? Kasi four times ka magsa-stock out in that year. Okay? And the last scenario is for this one. So 5% probability that the demand over that period would be 35. Pero 20 lang ang inventory mo on hand. So meron kang 15 na stock outs. That's why you have to have opportunity costs of 1,000 times four. Kasi four times a year, mangyayari ang stock out na yan. Okay? So that's the total stock out cost. So from there, the stock out cost is 7,000. Okay? So, anong interpretation yan? If the safety stock is equal to zero, the stock out costs is equal to $7,000. Okay? Now, how can we reduce the stock out costs? We can add safety stocks, right? Magdagdag ka ng 10 na safety stock, siguro yung stock out costs magiging less, right? Kasi liliit yung instances that your demand is higher than the inventory level, right? However, when you increase stock, uh, when you increase the level of inventory by having safety stock, you own carrying costs will increase, right? So you have to now balance two items, carrying cost and the stock out cost, right? That's what we need to, uh, to, to ensure that we are... Uh, we are balancing. So let's look at the next slide. So here we're trying to compute. So here we're trying to balance carrying costs and stock out costs. Okay. So ito yung first scenario natin. At safety stock level zero, all right, there's no carrying cost kasi wala namang additional cost kasi walang safety stock. And your stock out cost is 7,000. Let's have a scenario no, where the safety stock, there is, you nag-decide ka magdagdag ng five units na safety stock. So nagdagdag ka sa inventory mo ng five para mabawasan. Okay. So from 20, no, because nagka-safety stock ka na five, 25 na yung stocks mo. Right? So because of that, kumonti yung instances that you have stock outs. Dati yung tatlo, yung 25, 30, and 35. Pero ngayon, 25 na yung total stocks mo. So, dito, wala ka ng stock out cost. Right? Dito na lang, sa 30 and 35. And so, dyan ka na lang mayroong total stock out cost. So, the probability is 5%. The stock out is 5. Paano nakuha yung 5 na yan? That is 30, which is this one, minus 20, minus 5. The reorder point can be safety stock. So, ang stock out mo 5 times 1,000 times 4. Plus, dito meron akong, sa 35, meron akong uh, stock out ulit. Inan yan. 35 minus 20 minus 5. Meron akong 10 units na stock out. Na ang cost 1,000 in 4. So therefore, a total stock out cost ko, 3 na lang. 3,000 na lang. However, because I have 5 units of inventory, I have to add more carrying costs. 
right? Based on my in our previous example, our carrying cost is 80 per unit per year. And so therefore, that's also what we will use. Okay. So 80 per unit per year times five additional units of stock. You, know, you have $400 as carrying cost. So the total cost now is $3,400. It's better than $7,000, right? So better ito. Okay. Now, what if we increase the safety stock by five more? Ten naman, right? So therefore, ito hindi ka na stock out at this point. Di ba? Wala ka nang stock out at that point. Dito ka na lang may stock out. Magkano yung stock out mo? Five units. Kasi meron kang 20, reorder point, 10. So meron kang 30 units on hand, 35 on demand. So five ang iyong stock out. Okay? And the probability of that happening is 5%. So 5% times 5 times 1,000 times 4. So that's $1,000. Okay? Because you added, you have additional inventories, pero kang additional carrying cost due to it. No? So that's $80 times 10, 800. So the total cost now is one eight. So therefore, this is better. And therefore, you should add 10 na safety stock. Let's add 5 more. So check. 15. Okay? Kung 15, ang total inventory is mo, 20 na, reorder point, plus 15, safety stock. 35. So therefore, wala nang instances na meron kang stock out. So you're, you have zero stock out costs na. Right? Now, at 15, meron kang carrying cost. How much is your carrying cost? $80 times 15 units. Right? 1,200, which is lower than 10. So mukhang ito yung optimal. Why don't you check? Why don't you add 5 more? If you have 5 more, 20 na, Wala namang impact sa stock out cost. Right? Kasi 20 plus 20, 40 units na yung inventory level mo. Kaya nasa demand, 35 lang. Right? So hindi ka naman sa stock out. Pero tumataas lang yung inventory levels mo. And therefore, tumataas lang yung carrying cost. So here, the total cost na is 1.6. So 20 is not Optimal. So therefore, the decision is to have safety stock na 15 units. Okay? Because based on this probability distribution, it is the one that provides the most uh, economical for you because the benefit is greater than cost. Or in this case, not benefit, but the cost is minimized because of the safety stock. Okay, so I hope that's clear. Lastly, we have an industry comparison. Again, mining, consumer goods, and property. If you look at inventory days, it's also very telling of their industries, right? It's also very telling of their industries. So if you look at property, inventory days are very long, which is also uh, descriptive of their business model. Diba? Matagal ibenta ang inventory nila. And so therefore, we expect that matagal rin talaga yung inventory days. If you look at mining, I'm actually surprised that they have a longer inventory day than consumer goods. No? And probably, it has something to do with uh, transportation, logistics. No? Kasi yung inventory days is from the time of production to the time of sale. And in between the two, from production to sale, so meron kang production as in manufacturing, meron kang uh, finishing, meron kang logistics. No? So mahaba rin yung process na yan. So probably for mining companies, baka matagal yung logistics. Right? That's why uh, matagal yung inventory days. Or probably mataas lang talaga rin yung inventory levels kasi mababa yung demand in 2020. Pandemic days yan. No? So those are possible reasons. No? So for consumer goods, it's quite interesting. Very far apart yung inventory days ng Universal Rubina and 
Mod Nissin, and probably it reflects the type of products that they have. Mod Nissin is, ito yung mga noodles, right? More of necessities. Okay? URC, ito yung mga snacks, mga chippy, uh, yung mga Jack and Jill na, na chips, right? So during the pandemic, baka kumunti rin yung demand for universal rubina goods because usually yung mga snacks, okay yan for pag may work or sa school, right? So dahil walang school, bumaba yung demand. Okay. Pero the fact that Mond Nissin's um, kind, the type of products are more leaning towards consumer goods na necessities like noodles, then syempre tumaas ang demand for noodles during the pandemic period. And so therefore, it reflected also in terms of this um, variation or this um, discrepancy between URC and bond Okay. What are some other techniques for managing inventory? So these are the qualitative aspects. Na. One is the ABC system. So it's an inventory management technique that divides inventory into three groups, groups A, B, and C. Group A are inventories that are high, uh, that requires a high peso investment. So therefore, you have to monitor them closely. B group items are frequently controlled through periodic checking of their levels. And C group items are require unsophisticated techniques and they are low value items. For example, if you are a um, car company, no, yung supply mo ng plastic or supply mo ng, uh, uh, ng Steel, that's a group A item because malaki, mahal ang mga inventory na yun. No? C group items naman are inventory items na hindi mo na masyadong monitor closely. Say pako, screws, papel, those are all inventory items, right? Which you use in production. However, uh, because they are low value, you don't need to really... Uh, monitor them that frequently, hindi mo na kailang i-EOQ yun. Bantayan mo lang probably regular mean. Uh, check, check the balances uh, from time to time. No? So the two-bin two bin method is an unsophisticated inventory monitoring technique that is typically applied to C-group items that involves reordering inventory when one of the two bins is empty. So parang kaya siya two-bin method. So meron kang dalawang nalagyan, isang isang kinukuhanan at isang stock. So pag nangubos na yung kinukuhanan, order ka ng bago. So you don't need to compute for EOQs for those kinds of inventories. Okay? Another tip or, or technique in managing inventory is JIT systems. No? So inventory management systems are JIT or J just in time. No? Uh, ang goal ng JIT is to have inventories just in time. Meaning, pag nag-order ka, pag yung customer mo nag-order, doon nun palang gagawin ang invento, ang produkto. And because um, its production is just in time to ordering, you don't need a lot of inventories on hand. Right? Hindi mo kailang, o nyari, nagluluto ka sa restaurant. Your, your, your um, business is a restaurant. Kung nagluto ka na ng mga ulam, tapos yung ulam nandyan na sa bins, Okay, nandiyan na sa mga kaldero, hindi ka just in time. No, kasi pay chance na yung ulam na niluto mo, hindi naman mabili fully. Right? So there could be wastage, there could be inefficiencies. If it's just in time, ang lulutuin mo lang ay yung in order. And it's just in time as it is needed. And so therefore, walang masasayang ng inventory. Right? And that's the point of the JIT system. No, you attain efficiency, no, by by uh, by having materials arrive at exactly the time they are needed for production. Okay. Another inventory technique is uh, materials requ requirement planning systems. No? Essentially, these are computerized systems wherein it integrates external and internal information no, between suppliers and customers so that it will be easier to integrate sales and production planning. Okay, and if you're able to uh, to integrate sales and production planning better, then it will be 
more efficient for you to manage inventories. Okay. Next are issues related to international inventory management. No? So of course, international inventory management is much more complicated no? for exporters in general than for purely domestic firms. No? Of course, there are logistics costs to be considered because the distances are oceans apart. So there could be more delays, there could be damage, no? there could be different regulations from one country to another. So therefore, that complicates managing inventory on an international perspective. Okay? So the international inventory manager therefore puts a premium on flexibility. So it, could, it cannot be as rigid as having an EOQ. No? Because uh, there are a lot of factors to consider no? for, for international inventories. Lastly, some other inventory management issues. Number one, externalities that can justify inventory buildup. Even though there's an EOQ, sometimes the future is so different from the past, right? EOQs are usually from past data, right? And because they're from past data, the trends in the past might be different from what's going to happen in the future. And so therefore, your expectation of the future can justify inventory buildup. For example, in anticipation of price and supply changes or to weigh against the possibility of obsolescence and spoilage. If mau obsolete na, for example, yung produkto, eh baka hindi ka na dapat mag inventory buildup even though your EOQ is high pero mas spoil na or mag obsolete na, you can probably order less so that you can phase it out, right? Or you know that there will be a huge demand kasi magpapasko na, right? At iba ang Pasko ngayon kesa last year. So therefore, baka yung trends last year is not going to be uh, equivalent to the trends this year. And so therefore, it can justify inventory buildup. Okay? So bulk order for several branches or maintain a warehouse that will serve the branches per geographic area. Basically, this, this is a warehousing problem, right? Do you want a centralized, more or less, uh, say per region, you have a warehouse that funnels into the different uh, branches or each branch should have their own warehouse. So that's a logistics problem. And that complicates inventory management also because movement of goods from one branch to another can complicate, uh, can complicate, um, uh, inventory days. No? Of course, consigned goods is also an issue. What are consigned goods? Consigned goods are goods na pakilagay lang, pinapakilagay lang noong may-ari. Okay? So for example, I am a bookstore and then you have a book that you want to send pero ayokong bilhin yung book mo kasi magiging inventory ko yan eh if I am the, if I am the bookstore. So what I can do is I can you can consign the books to me na lang, right? I won't buy it. I'll designate a space for it, and then pag may bumili, then that's the time I'll buy it from you, right? So consigned goods and tawag doon. So of course there's also opportunity cost because consigned goods take up space, right? And so that's for consideration, and of course you have to account for volume and quantity discounts as the EOQ increases. No, uh, no, there could be discounts on the selling prices no, or purchase prices of those inventories. And so they have to be considered in the determination of carrying costs. Okay, that's it. Thank you.